Yeah, you got your balls to the wall, man. Yeah, yes, indeed you do. Uh, well, not you. They, they get their balls to the wall. Because you are going to put their balls to the wall when you break your chains and stop that oppression which has been practiced against you. All right, anyway, folks, welcome. This is the Balls to the Wall show, the Freakers Ball, Balls to the Wall program. Here, it's Friday night, November 15th, 2019, the Ides of November. <laughs> we're, a few, we're a few days past the full moon, and we are live right here on RealLibertyMedia.com on the Freakers Ball show page. Also on the RLM radio stream, which goes out everywhere. Uh, you can watch the video directly, if you like, on Vaughn.live slash Real Liberty Media. But if you're on the, uh, or want to listen to the various places on the radio stream, uh, you could be on RLM Radio XYZ, or right there on, on RealLibertyMedia.com, or on Internet Radio on the Real Liberty Media channel, or Tune In, or... Oh, all kinds of places. Shoutcast. We're out there. We're out there. So, uh, welcome to all the folks out there that may be tuned in, may be listening, or maybe not tuned in yet, or who knows? <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just say hi to the folks at realliberty.org. Hi to the folks on, on minds.com. I like the minds. Minds is cool. Um, uh, the, the Twitter, all, all the Twitter followers of Barman under, underscore RLM on the Twitter. We we got a lot of good fans and followers there on the Twitter. Yeah, some cool people, man. That's 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 where a lot of cool folks hang out. Uh, anyway, so welcome to all you all. But come on over here to the chat on RealLibertyMedia.com or just on IRC.Freenode.net. It's pound pound or Real Liberty Media, which uh, you can access the chat there on RealLibertyMedia.com. There's a little pop-up chat thing if you want to use that and uh, jump on in talk to all the great folks that are here in the chat room uh tonight and every night uh the actual live ones that i see hanging out are mr hansel j dread uh, i i do believe meester meister Moosterbrow is tuned in uh probably the uh, kate miss kate um graham z maybe she did a show graham z and, and circle have done their new show twice now it's a cool show uh they've been doing it in a vinny spot at 1 p.m eastern on fridays it's called perspectums and uh yeah it's, it's it's good stuff man let me tell you so they did their show earlier today and uh big news big news uh for miss graham z yeah she got married today yeah she went down downtown and got married it was kind of like, you know, like a, running an errand or something, I think. It was it was no big deal. <laughs> Her and the farmer are now coupled uh, legally. Not that they weren't already coupled, and minus the legally part. But, uh, yeah, they did that. So uh, congratulations to her and to him. Probably more to him. I mean, she's a great gal, so I, I don't know him. But... <laughs> You got yourself a good one there. All right. So uh, anyway, welcome to Beetle and the, the barman and myself. And the, the most girl is out on the town. She's watching a band tonight. I don't recall the name, but she she shared a video with me of this band the other night. Uh, and and the <laughs> the lighting or something was off, and they and they, they they looked like the Blue Man Group or a bunch of Smurfs up there on the stage. Yeah, it was a bluegrass band. So bluegrass, blue people. The, the Blue Grass Man group, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm sure she's having a good time out there. Uh, who's the lucky? The, oh, uh, it's, it's a man. You don't have to censor uh, the gender of Grammy's beau. <laughs> He's definitely a man. <laughs> um, <laughs> all I know is the, the farmer. She refers to him as the farmer. I don't know if that's his actual name. Or what? But it doesn't matter. It's her. It's her. Her guy. That it's been. She's been with for a while, and and they finally uh, did that legalized thing. So also we got Anti and Chalcedony and Echelon and Gramzy, the Mighty Gramzy, the Java Doctor, Meister Meister Moosterbrow, the Poopster and Prince who did their show last night, the tenth episode of the Power Hour. Yes, Miss Kate is with us, and Rome's and Vanna White. 
Um, but, but Vanna White's our, our one of our bots. She's a she's a great bot. We got Mr. Vincent Easley or Vin E, as he is colloquially known, uh, the Weather Dork bot that tells you about the weather and also lets you know if one of the links you posted had previously, well, within the last 24 hours, been posted by somebody else. Uh, some people find that a little annoying. But I find it kind of funny. <laughs> like, you're late on that story. Somebody already beat you to it. <laughs> we have Phantom and Asmo too. CC66, the uh, crypto coin boy. Uh, dude, Choscura. I haven't seen Choscura talking in here in a while, but uh, uh, I'm okay with that. We got the lovely Miss Circle over there in Denmark. Uh, with uh, oh, We got also Cyborg Noodle. And uh, damn, Van Meter! Yeah, she's a she's a good gal. I have secrets about her that I'm not going to tell you. We got duh and Ensiv. Hey, Ensiv, how you doing, man? Frumpy, Frumpy, Frumpy too, Frumpy work too. The grommet JJ's over there in Scotland. The Ponder Gander, uh, Pone Sauce, the Raptor McJesus face. Now, normally he's just Raptor Jesus, but apparently today. He is a raptor, McJesus face. <laughs> sock, sock, you awake, man? All right, socked up at the uh, uh, Slim, uh, Jim uh, Flim. He's probably working right now. I think he does a second shift kind of deal. Uh, the smart ass bot, the holiest Roger of the holiest Roger coin, and Zipex. Those are the folks that are listed here in the chat room. Uh, yeah, that's that's all of us that are here. But there's other people that could be listening out there that we don't know about. Um, I, you know, I never, I never had concerned Hansel J. Dread here is uh, saying at least if it's true, at least you'll never starve. Uh, it, it is true, and I never had a concern about Grammy starving because she is quite the industrious woman. She is not going to starve. She's a hardworking gal. And uh, she uh, she's she gets stuff done. Let me tell you, she's a uh, she 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 is a wonder. So uh, yeah, once again, congrats to her uh, on uh, on on doing that thing. <laughs> Not that I would ever want to do that thing, but she did. Oh man. <laughs> oh oh, if he really is a farmer. I assume he is. I don't know. See, either way, she grows a hell of a garden every year. So whether he's a farmer or not, she is. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there's that. <laughs> what did I want to tell you about? Something I wanted to tell you about uh, that was on my mind. Something that happened this week. Man, I tell you, you know, the brain's a wonderful thing, but uh, sometimes all the all the neurons don't fire and the order that I want them to, so to bring up the memories, to share them with you. But there was something I wanted to share with you about something that occurred this week. Well, damn, I can't remember it. Uh, no big deal, no big deal. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all had a good week. Those of you that do the 8 to 5 Monday through Friday thing, hey, it's Friday night, time to party. Time to kick the weekend into gear and have a good old time right here on RLM Radio, RealLibertyMedia.com. Uh, we're, we're doing whatever you do, man. Uh, man, woman, other, other, man, woman, and other. <laughs> All right, there's no other. Not that I'm aware. I mean, there are probably some others, but I, I don't think any are here. I don't think we have any others in this particular place. At this point in time. Could be, though. I mean, I don't know all these people personally. Uh, so I, I, there, there may be another or two. Um. <laughs> oh, and we have bots, too. So I guess a bot would be technically an other. Or a neither. I think a bot is a neither, not an other. <laughs> all right, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and start some music here. And then uh, we'll, I'll come back and, and we'll talk about some stuff, various, a variety of stuff uh, that I have lined up to talk to you about on this uh, wonderful Friday evening here in RLM land, RLM land. Hopefully, what, what's going on here? What am I missing? Oh, 
That's what I'm missing. Nothing. I'm missing my blunt, my, my brain. All right, this is a guy by the name of Gary Clark Jr. You may have heard of him around somewhere. Check him out. <laughs> All right. That's a Rammstein the track called Radio or Radio. Uh, that was off of uh, their new album there. Um what's the name of that new album by the way? Um the new album just could be called Radio. I'm not positive. Uh anyway, it came out last April. So, uh, good stuff, man, if you like the Rammstein. Uh, before that, we had Beth Hart, the lovely Beth Hart, from back in 2012, or 2004, actually, um, uh, with the track, I Don't Need No Doctor, a video there, man. That is, she is, ah, uh, boy, things I could let her do to me. Uh, anyway, we kicked it off with Gary Clark Jr. When my train pulls in from 2016 over there in Glastonbury. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I I just I just dig the music, man. I can't I can't uh, I can't tell you. I just dig the music. It's 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 magical to me. I, you know I. Uh, what, what what do I say? What do I say? Uh, nothing, I guess. <laughs> so there's just something about it. Just just it just just fires me up. I, I, I don't know. Uh, moves my soul. It's great. Okay. For what it's worth, you know. For what anybody cares. What happened there? What happened there? Veil, yes, okay. The Woodman in the Vale Land. The Vale Land. Now, um, uh, it's probably not a lot of y'all here that are uh, fans of the Jeopardy show, the, the, the game show Jeopardy, but I'm a big fan of it. I love Jeopardy. I watch it every, well, Monday through Friday. Uh, I, I record it on my little DVR so I can watch it uh, while I eat dinner. Uh, and, and so anyway, this uh, last couple of weeks was the Tournament of Champions on the Jeopardy. And uh, the one guy, the returning guy, uh, was Jeopardy James Holstetter, Holsauer, Holsauer. And he won. He, he, won, the, he won the thing. Um, so uh, congratulations to James there on that. Now, for those of you that play the trivia here in the chat on Sundays, while I'm playing the blues, um, you may have noticed, or I know many of you have know, about a category called Before and After. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's going to be a regular thing or not, and I know that it won't matter too much to us here in the chat trivia, because we have older questions. But they had a new category, Before, During, and After. So you had a whole, whole other element involved there. Uh, a little interesting, kind of interesting stuff. Anyway, I bring the Jeopardy up because of this article that I came across over here on Yahoo. <laughs> uh, Alex Trebek doesn't think Donald Trump would fare well on an episode of Jeopardy. And Alex, um, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine, I can't imagine uh, Trump on the Jeopardy, that would be hilarious. <laughs> anyway, in this article here, it says, In a newly published interview with Jeopardy's Alec Trebek, Vulture's David Marchese asks the game show's longtime show host how he thinks President Donald Trump would fare on the show. Naturally, Trebek was not afraid to give his honest opinion. He might not agree that any of the correct responses are correct. <laughs> said, said Trebek, taking aim at the president's frequent dismissal of facts. In the hours since the interview, 
uh, he, uh, hit the internet on Monday morning, people have been zeroing in on Trebek's dig, uh, among a handful of other notable lines from the piece. Um, so, <laughs> he says, oh, <laughs> anyway, it's just funny. I, you know, um, I don't know if you've ever seen any of the, uh, celebrity Jeopardy shows, but those guys tend not to be all that bright. Uh, <laughs> uh, so there it is. <laughs> I thought it was funny. So I thought I'd share. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Ah. Okay, speaking of Trump and dumb things done in Trump's name, I guess. I I, I don't even know what to make of this because it's not really... Trump had nothing to do with this. But um, this school did. Okay? Some kid's at a high school at a, uh, whatever, talent show kind of deal. And he makes a joke about Trump. And now... The police are investigating this kid for telling a joke about Trump. The article doesn't go on to say what, what kind of jokes the kid said about Trump. But come on! It's a kid at a school at a talent show doing a funny bit. And, and you send the police in? The, and the pig said, uh, we're still doing interviews, speaking with students, learning what was said in the context of the comment. So some teenager he makes fun. Somehow that belong that that's a cop deal. In North Carolina, Surrey County Sheriff's Office is investigating the North Surrey High School student for telling an anti Trump joke during a school sponsored improv show. Regrettably the performance included an inappropriate joke about the president. The school explained in a statement. <laughs> Like I said, it doesn't say what the joke was, um, or, or what, what the you know the whole deal about the joke, um, and if it was something that was maybe against school rules, then the school should handle it. You know, maybe give them a detention or something. You don't call the fucking pigs on a kid telling a joke. <laughs> I just, I just, what the hell? I mean, I I know it's. Uh, Maybe in that state, you know, um, Trump is a big deal. I, I I don't know, but let's assume let 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 let's assume assume this joke was told in a school in San Francisco. It, it would have been it would have been uproarious laughter, uproarious laughter. <laughs> there would have been, there would have been uh, no. There would have been no cops called in at all. The kid probably would have been given a prize of some sort, you know. But uh, I, I, I guess being where the joke, where the school is, North Carolina. I mean, I, I don't know. Is North Carolina like a huge, big red state? I don't, I don't keep track of those things. But either way, I just found it. It's like nuts. Why, how could you call the cops? I mean, I know that, that public schools are the uh, school-to-prison pipeline system, but come on! <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, I know that Trump's a little slightly on the... Maybe... Well, well, he calls himself a stable genius. A very... A very Stable genius. But I don't know that many very stable geniuses that have spiritual advisors. But he does, apparently. And I think most, most presidents have had a spiritual advisor of some sort or the other. But his, his spiritual advisor, Trump's spiritual advisor, expels demons from the White House Using the superior blood of Jesus. <laughs> it's not even satire. I wish this was satire. <laughs> but as far as I can tell, 
this site is is not satire. It, it this is this is absolutely accurate um, information that came out. It, <laughs> so here it is. Here it is. President Trump's spiritual advisor, Paula White, that seems a little racist. Oh, no, just kidding. Uh, seems to have had have one primary function, to expel demons from the White House. Now there's a video showing her doing exactly that. During the sermon at Morris Sorello's church in California last month, White declared the White House to be covered by the superior blood of Jesus. It doesn't take any spirit discernment or knowledge of wisdom to see that we have runaway generations, White said, and the flagged by RWW, whatever, opioid epidemic, suicide epidemic, sexual identity epidemic. Where do you want me to start? It's all over the place. The problem is not the world. We can blame it on the liberal education system that infiltrated the Ivy Leagues. Well, that's true. Right now, we're fighting bills in California in third grade and fifth grade. They can put certain things on certain vegetables and teach them how to insert them into certain parts of their anatomy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in California... Yeah, that's what they do. They teach you how to put condoms on and how to insert them into your body in various spots that maybe third and fifth grade kids should not be learning where to put things into their body. In these practices, among others, she incoherently rattled off that compels White to anoint the perimeters of the White House with the Holy Spirit. You better believe I'm up there singing the name of Jesus, she said. You better believe I'm walking around those parameters saying, I lift this up. I dedicate every ounce of this place as holy ground. And I dedicate it by the superior blood of Jesus. And every door that God opens for me, I invoke in the name of Jesus. While the remotely performed <laughs> exorcism on the White House, so, exorcisms from afar, exorcisms from a, from a distance, she goes on. I invoke the name of Jesus. I release angels right now and the Holy Spirit and walls of fire. I burn up every demonic altar in the name of Jesus and I call it to crumble. And any assignment by any principality, power, Darkness and wickedness against this nation, against other nations, is coming down. In the name of Jesus, let it all fall down. Let it crumble by the fire of God. Let it be burned right now. I erect the altar of God right now. I renounce every demonic spirit. I renounce every covenant made with Satan. There's a video. There's a video. <laughs> Apollo White. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> oh, man. Let me get my composure for a second. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Okay, I know, I know, from personal and um, not so personal experience with the people that are listeners on, on RLM and Reliberty Media, that a lot of you like to partake in the awesome weed. Yes, there are a lot of you that like to partake in the awesome weed. But apparently, there's a, a symptom that I was unaware of. A symptom, I say, <laughs> that, that I, I had no clue. I've known hundreds, maybe thousands of people that smoke the weed. They love the weed. It's good stuff. 
but there's something I didn't know, and maybe one of you can tell me if this has ever happened to you, because... What? <laughs> okay, listen listen up closely. And then if you're not un unsure, uh, pick up a mirror, because you're going to want to check it out for yourself to be sure. I, I know some of you out there listening right now are probably high on the weed. Police say people who smoke weed have green tongues. <laughs> There's no scientific evidence. <laughs> yes. Yes, I could not make this up should I so desire. <laughs> Police officers across the United States have used the observation as one of several signs to justify probable cause and to make arrests in criminal cases. In the early morning hours of May 2, 2018, Amanda Guamond was driving through York County, Pennsylvania, when the red and blue flashing lights came on. She was going more than 15 miles per hour over the speed limit. Oh, bad girl. The, the Northern York County Regional Office uh, police officer immediately smelled marijuana coming from inside her vehicle. Guamond, he wrote in an affidavit of, of affidavit of probable cause, had glassy bloodshot eyes. Okay, I, that's that's definitely a, a symptom. Lethargic speech. Yeah, not so much. That's more of a drunk thing. And a dazed and confused appearance. Dazed and confused appearance. Later, the police officer had a request for Guamond. Stick out your tongue. That's when he said he noticed that there was a green film on it. Guamond was handcuffed and placed under arrest on DUI charges after failing standardized field sobriety tests, which, you know, somebody just stoned can easily pass those tests. She, she was definitely doing something else. She said she hadn't smoked in about four hours, more than one year later, uh, though she said she still bothered about the allegations concerning her tongue. Not once has my tongue ever changed to green, said Guamond, 20-year-old cook and manager who's a medical marijuana patient and lives in Frederick, Maryland. I was extremely shocked. I was very angry. Police officers across the United States are alleging in some DUI cases that people who've recently smoked marijuana have green tongues. Maybe they were eating green eggs and ham. I don't know. Law enforcement is even told to look for a possible green coating in one specialized training program that's taught all over the world. But police can point to no scientific studies that show that marijuana causes someone's tongue to turn green. Yet for decades, they've used the observation as one of several signs to justify probable cause to make arrests in criminal cases. If someone is going to be convicted, it should be based on facts proven beyond a reasonable doubt, said Bradley Meyerson, a defense attorney in Vermont. Green tongue has nothing to do with marijuana ingestion, let alone impairment. <laughs> you green tongue bastards! <laughs> I can't. Uh, I, no, it doesn't happen. It does not happen. Uh, uh, come on, man. I smoked weed for, well, I'd still smoke it if I had some, but I, I smoked weed for decades. And, and no, my tongue never turned green. Not once. Not a single time. This is crazy nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> they're just it's, just, it's like they're just making shit up, you know, I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. All right, <laughs> let's play some more music. We'll come back to some of this other crazy stuff on the next go around uh, here. But green, you green, you green tongue bastards. <laughs> what am I doing? Get off that page. <coughs> Excuse me. 
All right, we're going to click it off, kick it off with a couple of classic old guys uh, doing a track here for y'all. So uh, enjoy. All right, Bob Dylan, everything is broken. Before that, we had Allison Chains, Man in the Box, and we kicked it off there with Eric Clapton and Bob Dylan doing Don't Think Twice. It's all right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Rome's is in there in the chat talking about the fact that uh, uh, the the show, the television, or the, the <laughs> I don't know, you call it television, I guess? Uh, anyway, on Amazon Prime, they have, they've had this show called uh, uh, The Man in the High Castle. I, I did watch the first two seasons of The Man in the High Castle, but I didn't watch last year, last season. I'm not really sure why. Um, it was okay. I, I, I kind of enjoyed it. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad program. But uh, now uh, the, the final season uh, is there on Amazon starting today. Um, Will I watch it? If I do, I'll have to go back and watch season three, I imagine, uh, because it kind of goes through a story. Um, so I, 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 it was it was all right, Joe. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, for some reason, uh, I just kind of lost interest in it um, after season two. Um, yeah, there's a lot of Nazis. It's all about the Nazis, actually. <laughs> I see Free and Slave to join us. Howdy, Free. How the hell you doing, man? Good to have you here with us. On the balls to the wall freakers ball type show, and uh, yeah, yeah, always, always good. Yeah, so um, I don't know if I watch it, if I watch the new season of that or not. So uh, yeah, kill that duck. All right, <laughs> all right. Uh, now, yeah, let's start with this one. Why not? Let's start with this one here. Um, because I thought this was odd. I, 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 it's not really that odd, though. It's just kind of a story. So, uh, yeah. Okay, over there in India, you know, they have this thing about cows, cattle. And, they, and they're, like, sacred to them over there, the cattle. But apparently this uh, one bull somehow managed to uh, work its way up a 200-foot water tower up the staircase on a 200-foot water tower, uh, which I would imagine if, if a bull started to go up a water tower, um, you got into the stairway, it, 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 it probably would have had to keep going up. It, it was just not wide enough on a staircase there for it to turn around, so it couldn't do that. And I, I'm pretty sure bulls don't like to back down, going backwards down staircases. So it worked its way up a 200-foot staircase, uh, up 200 feet up off the ground in this staircase. I, I don't know how much that would be, uh, how many stairs that would be, but but quite a bit uh, going up this water tower. So the people over there uh, in in uh, India, they used this massive crane to save the bull, uh, and they they went up there and they put these uh, kind of ropes around it and stuff and lifted it up on the crane and lowered it back down. Uh, into a truck, not onto the ground, uh, and then drove it off to somewhere safer. Uh, but but it's kind of crazy to uh, think that. And I guess some of the people over there they were they were upset that somebody had left the uh, gate open there on on the water tower stairway, and and so it, it could somehow wind up getting up there. Um, and these guys, I guess they were all volunteers. Uh, they they, to, they went up there to to save this 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 bull. Now uh, bulls tend to be um, maybe not something you you really want to get in a in a in a agitated situation, uh, but this one uh, they they did, uh, and, and they they like I said, they brought it way up there or took the uh, big old crane up there. It's it's a pretty good sized crane to get up there 200 feet, and, and then get these ropes around it and. And prick it up and bring it back down to the ground. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. I just found it a little odd and interesting. So, uh, there, you, there you go. 
Um, and that ain't no bull. <laughs> That ain't no bull. Oh, man. Oh, speaking of movies that you might like to watch, uh, last night over there on Tubi.tv, or TubiTV.com, actually, um, I watched this movie. It's called The Giver. And I'm not going to tell you too much about it. I'll, I'll give you the, the, the little uh, one-line description they give you here on it. Um, it says, In a seemingly utopian future... A young man is troubled when he learns about his society's secret past, which puts him at odds with the elite leaders. Now, um, I, I think utopian is, is really incorrect wording there. Dystopian uh, would, would be more accurate. Uh, to me, if you watch the film, it's a, it's a movie from 2014. Anyway, it's over there. It's on the Tubi now, and it's free. You can watch any movie you want on Tubi for free. You don't even actually have to make an account or nothing. You don't have to sign in. You can just go there and watch the movie. Um, so check it out, you know, if if you like uh, interesting movies. I, I, I found it quite interesting. Um, yeah. Something for you all to watch. You're looking for, for movies to watch over the weekend or whatever. So there you go, The Giver. Um, it has uh, like Jeff Bridges uh, and Meryl Streep are in it, and then there's other people who I didn't recognize. Maybe this Alexander Skarsgård guy. Um, so, uh, yeah, check it out. It was a pretty good movie. Uh, I think you'll like it. Uh, I think I think most people will like it anyway. I don't know about everybody, but uh, I thought it was a pretty good film. And like I said, you want to watch movies for free? There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. So, uh, how many of you out there are drinkers of the Pepsi Cola? Pepsi Cola. Do you drink the Pepsi Cola? Well, I'm, I'm going to say this is probably not just a situation with Pepsi Cola. It's probably a situation with all cola. But this article is spe specifically uh, linked to the uh, Pepsi Cola uh, because, you know, we've talked about things before about Pepsi, nasty stuff they put in their product, like um, cells from aborted fetuses, which, yeah, not good, not good. But now they admit, Pepsi admits, its soda contains cancer-causing ingredients. Yep, Pepsi soda, Pepsi admits its soda contains cancer-causing ingredients. When the Center for Environmental Health released test results showing that Pepsi intentionally covered up the presence of high levels of 4-mel in its popular soft drinks in 2013, the company denied both the presence of the chemical in its beverages and the fact that it was dangerous. 4-mel, which is short for 4-methylimidazole, okay, is a compound that is formed in the manufacturing of caramel coloring and is a known carcinogen. So right there, that tells you it's a compound that is formed in the manufacturing of caramel coloring well, all of your colas have caramel coloring, so they all probably have this ingredient in them. Since then, the drug, uh, the drinks, drug, the drinks maker has fought against complying with the California state requirements to place a cancer warning label on the beverages that contain the ingredient, which include not only Pepsi, but also Diet Pepsi and Pepsi One. I don't know why they're not going after Coca-Cola or Shasta or whatever other cola manufacturers there are out there, but it would seem uh, this would be industry-wide. Now, a settlement in a class action lawsuit against Pepsi has gained preliminary approval from a federal judge in California as part of the proposed settlement. Pepsi has agreed to ensure its caramel coloring 4-mel levels do not exceed 100 parts per billion 
and products that are being shipped for sale within the U.S. They will also be required to test the soda for specific protocols. The soft drink giant also agreed to these measures in a different lawsuit that was settled in California last year. The new settlement, however, expands on each of these measures from California to the entire country. The lawsuit accused Pepsi of failing to warn people that its beverages contain the formal. Why are you repeating this? Why is this being repeated here? Um, they, they, they repeat part of their article. All right. Citing a 2013 Mintel and Leatherhead food research report, Consumer Report said that caramel coloring is the world's most widely used for food coloring. At the time, Pepsi tried to say that because Prop 65 refers to the exposure per day rather than the exposure per can, that the average amount of diet soda that its drinkers consume daily is less than a can. What? There's no way that diet soda drinkers consume less than a can a day. So they said because of that, there was no need to place a warning on it. Consumer Reports disagreed, however. No matter how much consumers drink, they don't expect their beverages to have a potential carcinogen in them. Well, if you're not expecting carcinogens in these kind of products, you're a moron. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. <laughs> and we don't think 4-Mel should be in foods at all. Our tests of Coke samples show that it's possible to get lower levels. Oh, okay, there's that part about Coke and why they're not going after Coke. Uh, toxicologist Dr. Irvashi Rangan said, It simply does not make sense for people to expose themselves unnecessarily to an ingredient that merely serves to color their food. The consumers have the right to be aware what they are putting in their bodies. The popularity of books like Food Forensic Services, Food Forensics serves to illustrate the growing desire by Americans to know what ingredients their food products contain. Uh, the cancer causing caramel coloring in Pepsi is not the only re reason consumers should steer clear of it. Soft drinks are also believed to be behind the nation's obesity epidemic. A UCLA study found that adults who consumed one sugary drink, such as soda, every day had a 27% higher likelihood of being classified as overweight than those who did not drink such beverages. Moreover, drinking just one soda each day adds up to a total of 39 pounds of sugar each year. That sounds like a lot, but is it? Uh, that means that regular soda drinkers can cut the risk of obesity and cancer, that's the big one there, in one fell swoop. Because definitely the sugar is going to, and it's not actually sugar in most of these colas anyway, it's high fructose corn syrup, which is nasty of the nastiness. Um, it, it, that's definitely going to feed any cancer. So, uh, yeah, just just bear that in mind. This is posted over here on the dailycoin.org, in case you're interested in checking out the various links to the that they provide uh, to the documentation on this situation. So, uh, stay off the Pepsi and all the other. Just 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 quit drinking that that those canned sodas, man. Uh, those are those are those are not good. <laughs> All right, I, I kind of like this next one, just because. Well, um, <laughs> I think it's a great thing, and and I would imagine most of the patrons at that particular restaurant, food establishment. I don't know. Do you call fast food places restaurants? I guess you do. Uh, I just call them food establishments, and food is is kind of a marginalized term. Uh, in these places, but I do like the sign. I do like what they've done here. So Arby's posts a sign saying, only well-behaved children are welcome. <laughs> Do 
this is at a at a Arby's in Minnesota. So apparently it says they cooked up some controversy when it recently posted the sign on the store saying only well-behaved children are welcome. Uh, Christine Hemsworth visited the sandwich chain in Elk River with her three kids. Uh, with three of her kids. Didn't say how many kids she's got all together. All right. One of whom is a toddler. October 6th, when she spotted the offensive sign. What's offensive about saying, if your kids are little brats, we don't want them here? <laughs> Only well-behaved children who can keep their food on their trays and their bottoms on their seats are welcome. The sign read, if you can't do this, you will be asked to leave. Hemsworth immediately worried that her own toddler would not be able to sit still long enough, uh, but walked in for a meal anyway. I was like, oh my gosh, she told uh, Station Care 11. I've got a two-year-old with me, and he doesn't always want to keep his fries on his tray or his bottom on the seat. He so sometimes stands up. She said dinner with her kids went smoothly, but she told the station she felt uncomfortable. Aww, uh, during her time there. I wasn't sure if the sign was because they didn't want to clean up messes, Hemsworth said. I always clean up my children's mess anyway. Right, lady. But I was uncomfortable. You're, you're going to eat it at Arby's. You're not cleaning up your mess. But, but, <laughs> but it was an uncomfortable and stressful meal. Arby's told the station uh, in a statement that the sign was taken down. Well, that's a shame, because I think you should put it in every 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 restaurant everywhere all the time. We recognize the language on this sign was insensitive. No, it wasn't. It was perfectly fine language. Uh, we 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 removed it quickly and have disciplined the manager and the team working at the restaurant. It does not reflect our company's value, uh, values in family-friendly environment we aim to provide in all of our restaurants. Well, it should. It should uh, reflect your company's values. And family-friendly doesn't mean a bunch of screaming, loud, noisy, dirty-ass kids running around all over the place making messes and annoying other other customers who are just trying to get a sandwich. Care 11 posted the story to about about the sign to Facebook, where several commenters sided with the restaurant, arguing that little ones should not al be allowed to run amok. Fucking a right, they should not. <laughs> I think this should be the norm. One commenter said, "People have expectations, and one of them is to eat in a non-chaotic environment." I love children, but I'm not too crazy about parents that don't educate them concerning proper behavior. I understand children can act out and have meltdowns, but that is when adults take control and take the child or children out of the place so others can eat their meal in peace. But another poked fun at the fact that Arby's, it was an Arby's that posted the sign. Yep, when I want to have a pleasant and quiet sit-down meal with my family, I immediately consider Arby's the commenter said. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you don't, because you got these parents that are just terrible and with terrible kids. And uh, Hemsworth said that she had visited Elk River's location several times before and never seen such a message. Oh, I was shocked to find a sign like that, she said. It was a fast food restaurant. It's not something that, with white tablecloths, would that make a difference? What if they were checkered tablecloths? What if there's no tablecloths? You're, is, that, is that, it's supposed to be family oriented. Yeah, well, family oriented, like I said, does not mean your kids are allowed to just run rampant through the place screaming and making a mess. Uh, annoying people. Uh, you see. <laughs> Freaking Arby's. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Speaking of kids, <laughs> annoying little bastards that they are, um, <laughs> on the metro.co.uk, uh, 
What happened? What has happened to this world? I don't know. Kids given foam footballs because normal ones cause too much damage. And we're not even talking about footballs here because this is from the UK. We're talking about soccer balls. Foam soccer balls. So children in a seaside town have been told to play with foam footballs following complaints that normal ones do too much damage. Now, you can't really blame this so much on the kids as you can on the people that are that are making the complaints because, well, let me go on. The kids were, uh, were hit with a no ball games policy on their street after residents said wayward shots were smashing into cars and homes. Well, I, I don't know about this, but soccer balls bouncing off your car or the front of your house are not causing damage. It's a soccer ball. I can understand maybe this was a baseball or something like that, and they were breaking windows. Okay, maybe I'd get that at that point. You go tell the kids to go play in the sand a lot somewhere. But uh, soccer balls bouncing off your car? Come on. It meant football mad youngsters had nowhere to play as there was no designated area for sports nearby. But children at the Hawk Close in Neckaway Cornwall have now been given special foam footballs that they so they can carry on playing. The move was thought up by the housing association, Live West, who became worried that outdoor playing uh, time would be reduced. <sighs> Community connector My Evans said that we wanted to see if if, if we could find a practical solution to the safety issues of footballs. Safety issues of soccer balls. So we held a community engagement event with the residents to listen to their ideas and views. We came up with the idea of buying some lightweight, low-density foam footballs, which would allow the youngsters, younger children to carry on playing football. The feedback well, from has really been positive. You had a feedback from the parents, not from the kids. <laughs> anyway, I find it ridiculous. Let the kids play. Uh, and if you don't want them in the street, then, then send them off to a vacant lot somewhere. You know? And if you don't have any vacant lots, let them, I, I don't know. It, it, just, to me, it's just crazy. It's, 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 it's just like the overprotectedness, protectedness uh, of things going on in the world here today. Speaking of uh, crazy, overprotected stuff going on, <laughs> the lovely state of California, California, <laughs> uh, I'm sure Greta loves this, so by the way, I'm sure Greta is just all over this. Saying, that's right. You got to put a stop to this. Uh, what about my future? <laughs> You've stolen my childhood. All right. On Breitbart.com. California cities ban gas stove hookups. Wait, 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 wait for it. Wait for it. To fight global warming. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> environmentalists in me uh, mental midgets environmental midgets <laughs> in California are willing to let the state dictate how they cook in their own kitchens in an attempt to save the planet Thirteen cities and one county in California have placed zoning codes encouraging or requiring all electric new construction. Now, remember, this is California. And remember, in California, 
the big biggest of the gas companies out there, the biggest of the electric companies out there, I should say, gas and electric, Pacific Gas and Electric, PG&E, shuts off your electricity for days at a time because they can't maintain their own hardware. And their hardware causes fires all over the place. And they get sued and people die. So, now, you won't be able to cook in your home because you're being forced, if you are going to live in a new home there in one of these areas, to have all electric appliances. And also, they want you to drive electric cars out there in California. So you won't be able to drive anywhere because your car won't have a charge. So you won't be able to drive somewhere to get a meal that's cooked. And you won't be able to cook at home. <laughs> Whenever the gas and electric company decides, oh, we got to shut your power off for a week or so. No worries. Don't you, don't you worry about, hey, Vinny, how you doing, man? He has the P, Vinny has the PG&E master key. Sweet. <laughs> oh, God. Now, I, I currently, the, the house that I moved into here, that I live in here, uh, was pretty much, it's all electric. Uh, I do now have an external gas um, heater, uh, central heater unit outside. Uh, but that, but the gas line only comes to the outside of the house and stops there. I could have it run to the kitchen and and put a put a gas stove in, which I'd like to probably. But you know that's a lot of money and yeah, you know whatever. Uh, so I'm not going to do that probably, uh, unless you know somebody uh, inherits me a bunch of money. That's the right word for it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> and I, when I say a bunch of money, I mean a bunch of money, <laughs> which is unlikely to happen because I don't know anybody with a bunch of money. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but cooking on a gas stove, which uh, is is much much nicer, much much nicer. Um, uh, because the, the, the control of the flame, it's it, it's a, it's a better way of cooking than on an electric stove. I I do fine on on an electric stove, but the gas is is just it's just a better way of cooking. Uh, anyway, so regardless of all that, the crazies, the Lunabian, the Looney Tunes out there in California, thinking they're going to save the planet by preventing you from having a gas stove. Or other gas appliances, I guess that also applies to heating, which if you all have only electric heating, when they shut these off and the, the, your electric off, you're pretty well screwed there too, aren't you? <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to say uh, all the people that are probably going to be running generators are probably going to be creating a lot more uh, CO2 because that's what they somehow believe is a, a, a greenhouse gas, which, of course, it's not. That's a massive lie. Uh, but uh, those people, there's going to be tons of people running generators So because the gas electric company is shutting off all the, all, all the power all the time, and they're, they're going to need to be able to charge their cars, and they're going to need... Uh, to be able to cook and, ha and keep food in the refrigerators and uh, all that other kind of stuff that you need to do with electricity because well, you just have to. You need it. Um, you know, especially... Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's like they're trying to get people to just leave California, uh, which, I, I mean, I voluntarily did, uh, like I said, 15 years ago. Um, I, yeah, I, I got the hell out of there. Um, and for me, it was just uh, the fact that it was get too many people there. It, was, it kept getting more and more crowded all the time. And it was like, yeah, I'm done here. 
I'm 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 out. I'm 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 leaving. I'm done. I'm done with your shit. So uh, anyway, they they somehow think that stopping you from having a gas stove or a gas furnace is gonna save the planet, prevent the climate change. <laughs> it's freaking loony. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, so there's that for you. Let's play some more music. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Let's kill the duck. Oh, it's a fish. Let's kill the fish. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Did somebody say what? I did not play Just Eating yet. Oh, oh, see, I probably would have not known that was Just Edie, and and I'm not a fan of REO Speedwagon or that song, uh, but I'll get to it on the next set then. How about that? Um, I did I did not really realize that was going to be her because it doesn't say her name. Oh, there it is, Just Edie. Okay, never mind. I'll get to it. You can be sure. I like Jess Eady. She's cool. All right, this is uh, not Jess Eady. This is a, a gal by the name of Samantha Fish. And there's a guy playing with her named Jonathan Long. And they're dueling it up, dueling it up. Very nicely, by the way, on, on the uh, cigar box guitars. Ooh, smoking! <laughs> oh boy, it's some hot babes in that in that video, man. Uh, scorpions, the zoo. Of course, yeah, the guitars were smoking there as well. Uh, speaking of smoking guitars, just before that, Greta Van Fleet with Edge of Darkness. Yes, oh yes, more smoking guitars. Kicked it off there with Samantha Fish. A little cigar box duel with Jonathan Long doing Shake 'em On Down. Woo! Smoking! Let me tell you. <laughs> but yeah, that video, that last video, there was some, uh, yeah, there was some babes in there. Sorry for any of you that are offended by good looking babes. In more ways than one, I should say. <laughs> oh. I mean, how could you be offended by a good-looking babe? That's what I want to know. Cuz I, you know, I'm I'm missing something. I'm missing something. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh, this week, earlier this week, a couple of days ago, I guess, um, there, there was a little hubbub brought up about this application, communication application, uh, that uh, I like to use and we like to use here at Real Liberty Media. It's called Wire, uh, and, and it's like a, you know, a, a much better version of Skype. Um, and it's better because it's so privacy, privacy, um, minded. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, there was a thing that happened, I guess apparently a couple of years ago. Um, and I'll get to the article here, and it'll tell you all about it. But uh, the thing is, um, they they have a holding company. And the holding company, the hubbub, what's the hubbub, bub? <laughs> I'll get to that right here, right now. Okay, this is on TechCrunch. Um Prince, Prince brought this up uh, the other day in the chat. He asked me if I knew about this. I didn't know about it. Um, but let me just say, his concerns were misdirected, unfounded. Uh, not unfounded, necessarily, because the holding company, uh, th this whole thing was in Switzerland. 
Um, and, and they got this holding company now that has moved to the United States. I'll get to the article here, and I'll tell you about it. Uh, like I said, this is on TechCrunch.com, and um, it's very important, at least to me, um, and to, I think, probably uh, others here at Real Liberty Media, uh, because it is our primary uh, communication application at this point in time. Um, so here it is. Messaging app Wire confirms $8.2 million raised uh, responds to privacy concerns after moving the holding company to the United States. Okay? And we all know that if there's a company uh, of this type, of pretty much any type, that's in the United States, they're subject to all kinds of nastiness from the, from the government forces from the alphabet agencies, the NSA, CIA, the FBI, uh, all, all of them that want to poke their nose into everybody's business, regardless of what they're doing. But not with wire. Now, now, okay, here it is. It says here, big changes are afoot for wire, an enterprise-focused, end-to-end encrypted messaging app and service that advertises itself as the most secure collaboration platform. In February, Wire quietly raised $8.2 million from Morpheus Ventures and others. We've confirmed the first funding amount it ever disclosed. And alongside that external financing, it's moved its holding company in the same month to the United States from Luxembourg. A switch that Wire's uh, CEO, Morton Broger, described in an interview as simple and pragmatic. It, it is something you talked about. Are you listening in, Prince? All right. <laughs> he also said that Wire is planning to introduce the a freemium tier to its existing consumer service, which itself has a mil, half a million users. Um, oh, okay. He, uh, he's, he's just saw you talk to While working on a larger round of funding to fuel more growth of its enterprise business, a key reason for moving to the United States, he added, there is more money to be raised there. Of course. Well, we knew we needed this funding and additional su support to, uh, for continued growth. We made a decision that at some point in time, it will be easier to get funding in North America where the six times amount of venture capital, he said. While Wire has moved its holding company to the U.S., it's keeping the rest of its operation as is. Customers are licensed and serviced from Wire Switzerland. Uh, the software development team is in Berlin, Germany. The hosting remains in Europe. The news of Wire's U.S. move and the basics of its February funding Sands Value Data Backers came out this week via a blog post that raises questions about whether the company that trades on the idea of data privacy should itself be more transparent about its activities. Specifically, the changes to wire financing and the legal structure were only communicated to users when the news started to leak out, which brings up all kinds of questions not just about transparency, but also about the state of Wire's privacy policy, given the company's holding company is now on U.S. soil. And there's a tweet here from some guy, Peter Sund, called uh, Zombie, whatever. Uh, so he says, so turns out Wire changed ownership. Mm, not so much. Didn't really notify anyone, that's true, per their own privacy policy. And worst of all, it's uh, to a U.S. entity. It's uh, been proven time after time we shouldn't place our data or trust into U.S. entities. Yes, it has. It used, I used wire because it was different. Uh, and he copied to Snowden on the Twitter. It was an issue picked up and amplified by NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden via Twitter, he described the move to the United States as not appropriate for a company claiming to provide a secure messenger 
because everything in the U.S. is not secure. Uh, it claims a large number of human rights defenders on its soil. Um, and Snowden tweeted out, if you're a tech journalist, you should be digging into the story behind what's going on behind the curtain here. This is not appropriate for a company claiming to be a pro to provide secure messenger. Uh, okay, he's wrong. He's wrong. So, here it is. There was no change in control. The company has not been taken over or given, given off to somebody else. They just raised some capital. And the move was very tactical because of the fundraising. Broger said about the company's decision not to communicate the move, adding that the company had never talked about funding in the past. Our evaluation that it was not necessary. Was it right or wrong? I don't know. The other key question is whether wires shift to the United States puts users' data at risk. A question Broger claims is straightforward to answer. We're in Switzerland, which has the best privacy laws in the world. It's subject to Euro's, Europe's general data protection re regulation framework, the GDPR, on top of its own local laws. And wire now belongs to a whole, uh, and wire now belongs to a new group holding, but there is no change in control. Um, in its blog post published uh, in the week, uh, the wake of the blowback from privacy advocates, Wire also claims it stands by its mission to protect communication data with state-of-the-art technology and practice, listing several items in, in its defense. All source code has been and will be available for inspection on GitHub. All communication through Wire is secured with end-to-end -end encryption, messages, conference calls, files. The decryption keys, this is very key thing, the decryption keys for everything you do on Wire are only stored on user devices, not on Wire servers. It also gives companies the option to deploy their own instance of Wire on their own data centers. Wire has started working on a federated protocol uh, to connect on-premise installations to make messaging collaboration more ubiquitous. Wire believes that data protection is best achieved through state-of-the-art encryption and continues to innovate in that space with the messaging layer security, the MLS. But where data privacy and U.S. laws are concerned, it's complicated. Uh, Snowden famously leaked scores of classified documents disclosing the, the extent of the United States government mass surveillance uh, back in 2013, including how data harvesting was embedded in U.S. messaging and technology platforms. Six years on, the political and legal ramifications of that disclosure are still playing out, with a key judgment pending from Europe's top court, which could yet unseat the current data transfer arrangement between the EU and the ES. Um, he goes on to talk it's, uh, a, little, a little convoluted here, because it says privacy versus security. Security is privacy. Privacy is security. But whatever. Uh, Wire launched at a time when interest in the messaging app was at high watermark. The company made its debut in the middle of February 2014 and was only one week later that Facebook acquired WhatsApp for $19 billion. Uh, we described Wire's primary selling point at the time as a re-imaging of how communication cool tools like Skype should operate had it been built today rather than in 2003. That meant encryption and privacy protection, but also better audio tools and better file compression and more. It was a pitch that seemed especially compelling considering the background of the company. Uh, Skype co-founder Janice Fries and funds connected to him were, were the startup's first backers. Uh, they remained the largest shareholders. Uh, Wire was co-founded uh, in by Skype alums Jonathan Christensen and Alan Durek. The, uh, Durek is no longer, um, oh, uh, Christensen is no longer with the company, and uh, Durek is the CTO. Uh, even as new investor Morpheus has Skype roots, 
Uh, so, uh, you know, here's the thing. And there, there's more to the article, more to the story. But the thing is, every way that, that wire has been operating all along, it's still operating that way. It got money uh, for investment and growth from from this Morpheus Ventures company, which is a U.S.-based uh, entity. And so they, they moved the, the holding company, but not the operations, to the U.S. So wire is still fine and safe and good to use. And additionally, I tested out several other open source, free open source secure apps uh, as maybe a possible replacement to wire. And none of them, none of them were up to par. Uh, they, they all, I kind of like Jammy, uh, J-A-M-I, which um, is is nice, but it, it the application uses a lot of your system resources. As soon as I started running it, my CPU went up 10, 15 percent. Uh, and that happened on both, on the Windows and on Linux. So that didn't work out. Um, there was one Rocket one, I think. And then uh, Prince gave me another one to look at. And I, and I tested the one that Prince gave me basically looks like Discord. Um, and it was hard. It was a hard sign up. And, and, and which for me, not a big deal. But for a lot of people, it would be a big deal um, on that. So, all I, all I can say is, uh, at this point in time, at the present point in time, Wire, and by the way, I checked out Jitsi too, and Jitsi has pretty much gone to uh, mobile only uh, on, on, their, on their thing. Uh, there, there is still a, a download for it, but they, they want to do it it's basically like a, a SIP account, uh, a VOIP type setup. J Jitsi's changed a lot. Uh, so, and I used to use Jitsi, uh, but yeah, they, they goofed around with stuff. And anyway, uh, wire is still your best bet. You're still your best option. And, um, I, I, I <laughs> yeah, Jitsi went to Jitsi. No, the Jitsi, I'm sure it's fine, uh, as a SIP application. Uh, but for something like that, I got Zoiper, um, which I, I don't really care. But Jitsi does other stuff. I mean, you if you could use I, uh, Jitsi for IRC if you want. Uh, you can use it for other other types of messaging apps uh, or messaging protocols, I should say. Um, so, yeah, Hal should get wired. That would be great if he did. Um, anyway, whatever. Uh, I, I I investigated a lot of different. Uh, programs. I spent a lot of time on it, uh, looking through different things, and some of them are nice, and, you know, fine. But uh, I, I forget the one that I kept on. It wouldn't connect, and then it would connect, and then it was really slow. Um, and they they kept on trying to push you uh, to buy your own server, and and it's like I never had anything like that with Wire. Uh, you know, Wire's been solid. It's been good, um, and and I, I'm 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 happy with it. Um, and it, it, it bar yeah, you barely even know you got it on when you, on your system, you know, uh, it, so it, to me, it's, it's, it's great. Um, so I'm going to stick with it. Um, hopefully, uh, uh, other people do as well, because from what, all I've seen, all I read, it's, it's, it's the right way to go. <sighs> okay. Enough on that. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> All right. YouTube. YouTube's a whole different problem. Now, I don't know how this is going to wind up for us, uh, us here at RLM, because YouTube put this thing out, this new policy out. And part of the new policy is YouTube can delete your account if you're not commercially viable. Whatever that means. Whatever the fuck that means. Commercially viable. <laughs> All right. The Internet's biggest video hosting site can delete your account if your use of it of its service is no longer deemed commercially viable. YouTube posted a uh, terms of service update of uh, 
of policies uh, to take effect on December 10th. So it's not quite in effect yet, but that's that's coming up soon. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you, uh, so one of the new rules stated that you YouTube may terminate your access or your Google accounts access to all or part of the service if YouTube believes in its sole discretion that provisions of the service to you is no longer commercially viable. As Mashable summarized in its coverage, in its most basic terms, if YouTube isn't making money off of you, the company can delete your account. The, the Terms of Service update quickly noted shortly thereafter that if you believe your Google account has been terminated in error, you can appeal using a form that will never be looked at by anybody ever. But it'll make you feel better filling out the form. <laughs> with that in mind, can YouTube be trusted with its appeal process? No, it's never been able to be trusted with its appeal process. What about with creators' money? Eh, I, I don't know. I, I don't get any money off YouTube, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but uh, I assume uh, that Real Liberty Media on YouTube is probably not a commercially viable entity. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's play a couple a couple tracks here, and we'll come back. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should put all your stuff over on uh, on uh, BitChute, Vinny. Yeah, get all get all your videos and put them all over all on BitChute. Um, that's that's definitely the way to go. Uh, just, just if nothing else, just to be safe, you know. All right. So Hansel, uh, during uh, my last set, posted a link there in 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 the channel about uh, the, how the how some of the uh, the trans people. Are, are messing with women's sports, so I I thought I'd share this short three minute documentary with with y'all about how 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 it's actually going. So here you go. Thanks, Fatso. Thank you, everyone. That was not. That was <laughs> oh boy, Metallica there uh, covering uh, Leonard Skinner's uh, Tuesday's Gone. A very, very nice job of that. Uh, inter interesting kind of uh, different take on the song, but it's still still true to the original. Uh, so uh, good job, boys. Uh, before that, we had Just Edie covering REO Speedwagon's Time for Me to Fly. An acoustic version. And beautifully done, beautifully done. And we kicked it off there with uh, a clip from the, I guess, I think it's the latest episode of South Park there. It's called Go Strong, Woman Go. Um, <laughs> bored Girls. <It's laughs> yeah, some, uh, like a WWE guy or something. Uh, <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> pretending to be a woman, or, or identifying as a woman, I should say. Uh, yeah, so um, <laughs> that, was, that was hilarious. Uh, yeah, kicking all the yeah. So uh, yeah, that, that doesn't work out. That's no good. You can't have can't have these these big muscle dudes uh, in women's sports competitions. I, I, uh, big muscle guy, uh, women dudes. I I don't know, man. Who, wait, somebody, somebody, what happened there? Savage with Grim there. What now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How did you do that? All right, all right, Cowboy Tech. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right, well, you... you. <laughs> All right, so what do we got here? Uh, five, eight, uh, eight, eight. Is that what we got here? 
Yeah, eight, eight will do. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Randy Savage wrestler. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know who the guy was supposed to be. Some, but he looked like a wrestling dude. <laughs> All right, we got time for something else here. <laughs> uh, Google, Google. Is medic doing medical stuff? Google is keeping your medical data. Google has fifty million people's medical records, and they say Google says you can trust us. Yeah, how many times has Google data been leaked all over the place? Huh? Huh? <laughs> okay, the original story says Google now has access to detailed medical records on tens of millions of Americans, but the company promises it won't mix that medical data with any of the other data Google collects on customers who use its services. However, there's an update. Um, Google Ascension Project is now being investigated by the Office for Civil Rights in the Department of Health and Human Services. The Wall Street Journal reported last night, as an update last night, the office said it will seek to learn more information about the mass collection of individuals' medical records to ensure that the HIPAA, the HIPAA, uh, protections are fully implemented. Google said it is happy to cooperate with any questions about the project. Uh, and we, that we believe Google's work with Ascension adheres to industry-wide regulations, including HIPAA, regarding patient data and comes out with strict guidance on data privacy, security, and usage. Let me tell you this right now. I do not trust Google with this data. Now, I personally don't have any medical data. I haven't been to a medical facility of any type since the early 90s, I guess. I, I don't know. It's been a long time. <laughs> I don't go to those places. I don't like them. I don't trust them. I don't want anything to do with them. But Google says, eh, no worries. You people that have all these whatever diseases and you don't want anybody to know about, we have your information, and you can trust us. No. No, you can't. Google provided this statement yesterday, shortly after the Wall Street Journal reported that Google is partnering with Ascension, uh, the, the country's second largest healthcare system, on a project to collect and crunch the detailed personal health information of millions of people across 21 states. To be clear, under this arrangement, Ascension's data cannot be used for any other purpose than providing these services we're offering under the agreement, and patient data cannot and will not be combined with Google, Google consumer data, according to Google in a blog post. That would mean Google won't use the medical data to target advertisements at users of Google services. I'm just going to say right now, they're liars. I don't trust them. I don't believe them. I, I ain't buying their story. Um, they, can, they, can, they can go straight to hell. And uh, if, if you, if you want to go ahead and trust Google with uh, your stuff, I, I don't know how you prevent it. I mean, if they've already got the data of 50 million people. Ugh. All right, <laughs> all right. Well, we gotta do. Our, I gotta. I gotta do. I gotta do the last set here. We. We. I always say we. Moose girl's not here. <laughs> all right. Now the last set we played uh, Metallica doing a, a, a track by Leonard Skinner. Tuesday's gone. This track is by Steven Seagulls doing a Metallica track. Sad but true. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Black better. <laughs> 
Christopher Amoroso, man. Uh, I love that version of Black Betty. That's just awesome. Anyway, I kicked it off there with Sad But True by Steve and Siegel, the uh, Metallica tunage. Yeah, man, it's been a fun show. I had a good time. Hopefully you all had a good time as well, uh, listening in, tuning in, playing along in the chat. Uh, tomorrow, I don't know if there's going to be a dark table or not because uh, Grammy is going to be out of town. Uh, maybe it's like a uh, honeymoon or something. I, I, I don't know. Uh, she just got married today, so uh, it could be anything. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, anyway, so I don't know. Uh, hopefully Flash will come on, and maybe, hopefully, somebody will join him tomorrow uh, there on the dark tape ball. Uh, so <laughs> that'll be cool. Um, I'll be on Sunday at my normal time, noon Eastern, with the blues. And we play the trivia here in the chat, followed up by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up the big old can of whoop ass and trying to kick them crickets in the butt. Uh, so, uh, I'll be on again Monday, Monday evening at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. Grim Leftovers, uh, tune in for that. Check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all of the rest of the shows here on RLM Radio throughout the week. And just stay tuned to RLM Radio because you'll get shows like you had today with Circle and Graham, Grammy uh, doing their Prospectums show that is not on the schedule as of yet. So uh, we'll, we'll see. And other shows will be popping up. Uh, y'all have yourselves a great weekend. Uh, love y'all. Uh, really. Seriously. Yeah. Every, every single last one of you. Even those people that I can't stand. <laughs> Peace.